Welcome, welcome. I just want to say this is an important conversation we're going to be having today. I'm Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solution, and today's topic is breaking barriers, diversity, inclusion, and networking in modern accounting. And I'm going to be talking with two important women, Shane Schaefer and Cindy Stanley. And here's a little bit about what we're going to be covering. The evolving face of, of, of diversity in accounting, how professional associations are turbocharging collaboration as well as mentorship, and women's voices and how they're reshaping the future of accounting. I suggest you have some pen and paper or wherever you like taking notes because Shane and Cindy are on a mission. I know they have so much to share with their combined wealth of information and knowledge about women and the direction that they're taking the accounting profession. A little bit about AFWA. The mission of the Accounting and Financial Women's Alliance is to enable women in all accounting and finance fields to achieve their full personal, professional, and economic potential, as well as contribute to the future development of the profession. Cindy Stanley is the executive director of the AFWA, and Shane Schaefer is AFWA's conference and education director. If you want to find out more about Accounting and Finance Women's Alliance, as well as the different ways they are moving the profession forward with women, the events that they host, how to be able to get additional insights and knowledge, you can go to afwa.org and everything is there. So Cindy, Shane, I am so looking forward to this conversation. And before we kickstart anything else, I know they have the Women in Accounting Conference coming up next month and would like to just hear a little bit about that and why it is important. Well, thank you, Lauren. We are just so excited to be here and we can't thank you enough for doing this podcast for us. We're just, we're very thrilled about working with you. And as, as you mentioned, we do have our Women Who Count Conference coming up next month. It's coming up very quickly. And uh, we are hard at work trying to wrap up all the last minute details. And it's going to be October 26th through the 28th in Hilton Head. So we are really very excited and our attendance is up. And we're also very thrilled that uh, Lauren is going to be one of our speakers. So she's doing a program for us. And so we're very, very excited about that. And can't thank you enough because your voice is important too. And so we really appreciate all the work that you do in this area and what you do fits in so well with what we're doing. And so we have, um, is it Shane, I believe 22 credits available? Yep, yep, up to 22 credits, yep. I'm gonna, Shane's our planner, so I'm gonna let her talk a little bit more about the actual details of it. She she can speak a little bit more to that as, as we go. Yeah, so we, we do go from Tuesday to Saturday and it is up to 22 credit hours. We are having a couple of sessions on Saturday morning as well as our first career day. Uh, we are understanding that pipeline um, in the career field is getting a little less and less. So we're trying to get out there and educate the college, if not the high school seniors in the technical areas and trying to get them interested in the accounting profession. So that is our first time we're doing it. We're looking into that local area. So if you're out there in the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina area, and you want to come to Hilton Head, the beach, which is a horrible place to come at the Westin on a Saturday morning, we're calling it a career day tailgate get it done before the football game starts. So um, check out our website. We have all the details there, but we have been told, Lauren, that people that come to our conference leave very uplifted. And so that's what we're all about is lifting that woman and empowering that woman uh, to, to just make that next step forward. And, and it's actually very close to Georgia as well. So I want to say that too. Uh, so Shane, are there like many, any teasers you can share about what is going to be making this a must-go conference for women in accounting? Well, we have a couple of key speakers, um, but one that is a podcaster himself. His name is Greg Kite, and it's Oh My Fraud Podcast. And if you're an accountant person out there, and if you have not listened to this, you are missing out. He is highly entertaining also very uh, informational. So he is going to be one of our keynote speakers. So definitely got to come and see him. 
And just to let everybody know, I actually interviewed Gret for a similar podcast episode a couple weeks ago. So if you want to get a taste of his personality and how he shows up, <laughs> go ahead and check that out. It, it's all about Ford, which is his favorite topic. So it was a very engaging conversation. Yeah, well, that, that we're keyed excited. Up, so, yeah, that keyed up nicely, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're excited he's coming. Um, our members just love him, and we're we're really excited about that. Um, we actually have um, also have um, some people from the IRS that are coming to speak. They are actually um, sponsoring our conference, and they last year did a presentation that was so entertaining and just uplifting. And you know, people sometimes think, "Oh, the IRS is dry." No, 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 no. <laughs> this was funny. Mm -hmm. It was fun and our members loved it so the attendees um really enjoyed you know meeting the people from the irs and so we're really excited they're going to be part of it as well so shane i know we've got a couple other keynotes yes we do um we have amy um yip yip as she is going to be uh, doing a stop uh say yes stop saying yes to everything and start asking for what you want. Um, kind of what you, we, we, I read your, the same kind of thing with you, Lauren. I completely agree with women need to start asking what their worth is and, mm -hmm. and, and getting paid what their worth is. Absolutely. We have uh, Dr. Joyce T. Joseph from NASBA coming in. Go Red sponsored her for us. So we're excited. We've never had a NASBA, uh, a, a FASBA, sorry, F A S F A S. B. Yeah, yeah, I was going to NASBA and FASBA. She is really uh, very, we're excited to have her. Yeah. She is on their board of directors. And so to have a FASB representative is just phenomenal. And uh, uh, she's being sponsored by Go Red. And so Go Red for Women. And we're just, we're really excited. And, and Lauren, of course, like Shane said, your presentation is one of our highlights because of what you speak on about women's worth. And that's really what we're all about, you know, mm -hmm. trying to help, you know, empower women to be their very best. And, and if you look at the landscape of accounting, it has been rapidly changing over the past couple of decades. At this point, women actually outnumber men. So I wanted to just get your take on what you're seeing as far as diversity, inclusion, maybe some of the changes that you've noticed and the challenges that continue to remain in the profession? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and you know, when we, we have a, a project that we work on every year, it's called our MOVE project, where we track some of the women in accounting and, and how they're doing in the accounting field. And so when we started the project back in uh, 2010, there were only 17% of the women that were making it to the partnership level. And at this point today, we're, we're actually at 39%, but still, we still have a long ways to go because as you mentioned, there are over 51% of the women in the industry, in 51% of the people in the industry are women. So, you know, we, we've come a long ways, but there's, there's still a long ways to go. And, and we really, as an organization, you know, try to focus on that diversity and inclusion and just working to make sure that we're addressing, you know, the gender um, equity issues as well as inclusion in general. So um, we have come a long ways in working with that and helping to promote that and, and have a lot of different activities. And our Women Who Count Conference is actually one of those activities that we do each year to try to help you know, get that message out in front of people that, you know, it's still still an issue and still, you know, we're a little bit concerned right now because we're seeing some companies back away from, you know, the DEI initiatives. And so we're hoping that that will still, we'll still be able to continue that discussion and that conversation because it's one thing to talk about doing those things. It's another thing to do them. So mm -hmm. we're finding um, some companies are saying that they're focusing on the DEI issues, but when you really get down into it and hear about it, they're not doing what they're saying they're doing. And so we're, we're trying to focus on heightening that awareness as well. 
And, and I believe that diversity actually makes a firm stronger because you come in with a different way of looking at things, problem solving, approaching services, client relationships, and that um, having women there, they, they bring a different way of taking a firm than how men might approach it. So the more that it's diversified, the stronger that firm actually is through all the changes that are going on in the world. But one of the things I also realized is that when I was going through college and all my business classes, and even when I first got into the my professional track, I didn't really understand networking. It wasn't something ever taught to me. And that women actually network a little bit differently than men do. So I wanted to hear your thoughts about professional associations as far as fostering diversity and how that plays a role for women who are in accounting. And if you can share examples, I would love to hear something that is like a real life story. Yeah, we actually, we've got a couple of stories, but let me, let me share with you first some of the things that we're doing. Um, we actually just started a new mentor mentee program for that reason of what you just said that, you know, it is different. It is different for women um, being mentored by different people. And so we actually just set that up. And so we're looking for people to help with that on both sides. And we also recognize that with our membership, that there's a big need for that, that like yourself, and, and I went through the same thing. It's like when I was younger, I, I didn't even know what a, a mentor was until later in life. And then I realized, oh, that person was a mentor to me <laughs> without realizing what they were doing. But being more focused on it, I think, creates better results. Mm -hmm. And it allows us to be able to focus more on helping that individual. Um, and Shane can share with you a, a couple stories of one one member that we have that, that was on our board of directors. I'll let her share that story with you. Well, I have a um, I have a older one and I have a more recent one. So Eleanor was um, been in the accounting industry. She's about ready to retire. God love her. And she told us uh, her networking skills back in the old days was going up to the old college pin board and taking off a piece of paper with a phone number from AFWA uh, and like, what is this all about? And she called it up and uh, she started a chapter in the college. We do have college chapters mm -hmm. as well as city chapters, as well as a national chapter. And so she actually uh, got involved and she found a business partner in there. Uh, she went, to, one went to public, one went to private. They decided to get together and start their own business. They have now sold their business and she's still on our board. And I'm like, Eleanor, you are our mentor mentee like story. And then recently we have Chelsea Sowers who is in the Chicago area who helped us get the Chicago chapter started. And um, her was a little bit more unique. She started a little bit later in life, around age 30, deciding. But she said there was this lovely lady that reached out to her and, and said, hey, you know, why don't you come and join? And she was paying for her meals and her activities and actually being a mentor to her, but not really, you know, having it into a program. And that she goes, she, she like, she wasn't invisible anymore. She was yeah. a unique DEI, you know, LGBT uh, person in the accounting field. And, you know, she felt kind of invisible. She's not the typical person. And she's like, she was so excited that AFWA's members leaned in and took her underneath her wing. And she'll tell you that story. It still makes her, it gives me chills and tears. I, I, I love hearing about that because I think that people actually crave to be seen and heard. And to have that mentor-mentee is something where you can be really guided in a way that is geared with the type of person you are, your personality, in order to avoid maybe some of the costly mistakes by just following the status quo that you think you ought to, but it might not be the right track for you. So I, I think that having someone guide you along is really important. The, the other thing I think that's really important by having this maybe established as a structured mentor-mentee program is that 
women in general, they are so good at helping others, but they're really not as strong as asking for help. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, that's and, very true. And, and, and setting it up to where it's okay to ask for help and guidance, I, I think is going to impact more women than we actually will ever realize because those women are going to give back because they had a positive experience and they're going to mentor the next generation down the line and and so on and so forth. So it, it's not just about what you're offering now, but it's about the possible legacy that you're creating as well. Well, and you know, what's really interesting when we put out the call for looking for mentors and we're looking for mentees, we have people that signed up for both. Hmm. They said, I can mentor and I, I, but I need some help too. So I, I thought that was really fascinating. That is pretty cool. Nice. So, so it's a give and take. It's on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and so we're thinking about this and some of the things that you're putting in place. Once again, my focus really with our conversation is diversity, inclusion. And I mentioned a little bit about problem solving in the accounting field. So how have things maybe been changing or adapting because of diversity and inclusion and the whole DEI initiative? One of the things that we've seen, and that is, there's been some research on it, and there are some statistics that prove that, you know, um, companies that are more diverse and inclusive have a broader perspective, that they function better, that they, you know, when they pull together people from different backgrounds, that they have improved decision making. Um, They are able to, you know, kind of grow as a company, make better decisions. Um, They also, there's some statistics around enhanced creativity because you pull people from different groups and different ways of life together. And so the diversity really does foster creativity by encouraging, you know, the exploration of new ideas and approaches. So there's, there's statistical research around that. And they really do emerge from the intersection of different viewpoints. You know, I'm a, for those people that know me, I'm, I'm a big believer and there's more than one right answer. And that's, mm-hmm. I've lived by that. And Shane, Shane probably gets sick of hearing it, but <laughs> I do live by that, that there is more than one right answer. And, you know, one of the things that we have is, you know, with that as well is through the diverse groups that there is a better understanding of customers. Um, you know, the a leadership can better understand and connect with there's a diverse customer base. So that understanding, I think, is really important. There's also um, increased em- employment, employee engagement and retention in mm-hmm. diverse groups because you don't have those issues where people aren't feeling like they're part of the team or, you know, they feel welcome. They feel like they can um, give their ideas and and step forward and, and grow within the company. And I think that is so important. And when you have um, teams where that's not occurring, and and I, I know there's been a couple members that I know where they're in positions where they feel that they're really not respected um, and they're not appreciated. And I know myself in, in former roles, I've, I've been in that position and it's very difficult and it's hard to be creative. It's hard to grow when you're, you're not feeling appreciated or you're not feeling part of a team. And so as an organization, we really focus on that and giving people the tools and the techniques that they need. And that's why, again, your session is so important to us in talking about that and how do you how do you, when you're in that situation, value yourself enough to step outside of it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and to help yourself grow? And 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 one of the things I've seen also that I would like to add is um, my, my son-in-law, he is a CPA in, uh, in a firm as well that, and his particular office has a lot of women. So because of that, he tends to have found a firm that's actually family focused. And when he needed to take time off because of some family needs, 
he was able to do that without it being an issue or a strike against him uh, compared to maybe some other corporate style firms. So have you seen any of that also about more flex scheduling and being a little bit more family friendly because of the diversity that's coming into the profession? We have, and we actually see that those are the firms that thrive. Um, you know, there there are some issues where when it's it's just the top down, those they tend to struggle because they don't have the created creativity. And as you know, the industry is changing so rapidly right now with the different technology and the different, um, you know, software and different things that are out there to, you know, just AI capability alone mm -hmm. is changing our, our industry so rapidly that if you don't have those people on your team that can be creative or feel that they can speak out and with the, the family feeling, so to speak, that they aren't doing as well. We're, we're seeing that in the industry. And so that family growth and that family feeling, I think it is very important to, and it's interesting to hear your perspective from your, your son's capability, from his capability and from his firm, um, from that other side. And so that's, that's interesting to hear as well. And, and, and so, Shane, I wanted to ask you about networking. I know I touched on it a little bit. It is such an important step, stepping stone because a lot of times career advancement is about being seen, standing out, relationships. Any advice you can give for being able to build some of those professional networks, um, especially if you tend to be more of an introvert than an extrovert, and it's not something that comes naturally to you? So oddly, you should say that because on Saturday, we're having a session exactly on what you just said, being an introvert in the extrovert world of accounting. So we're having that on Saturday. Um, but I would think, you know, also just with COVID, COVID changed everything too. So you have these um, additional, I don't know if they're Gen Z now or whatever they're doing, but, you know, they they liked being antisocial, I hate to say it, with COVID. And that is actually another reason why we're trying to do a career day um, is to get out and actually tell them how to network, tell them how to get involved a little bit more. Um, look for an AFWA, like social environment. If it's not in your school, like out and about, LinkedIn has a ton of groups that you can get hooked up on. I'm, I'm already hooked up on them just to make our own AFWA network out there. But there's there's so many different ways and so many different avenues of women, or if you want to do an ethical, you know, there, there's not just one for one individual. There's so many out there in so many different ways, but we would like to be your stepping stone, especially if you're women and you're looking to, you know, move forward in your career and you need help, we definitely can help guide you in that way too. I always still say the seven, eight, nine degrees of separation. It may not be me who knows things, but I can reach out to Lauren and say, hey, I got somebody who's going to Atlanta, Georgia, who's looking to get into this type of business. And like, do you know anybody or how can, that's networking. And a lot of people don't realize just reaching out to your local partners that you already know may already have that network for you, but you have to ask. And that's mm -hmm. where that introvert comes out of, uh, like you were just saying, asking for what you're worth and asking for the wages. Um, you have to you have to ask a little bit, but we're, there's plenty of places out there to help. Well, and I and I think one of the things I think one of the things that we hear with our conference that is so wonderful is people. And I didn't realize this. I, I've been with AFWA for about seven years, and and I didn't realize this until I attended the first conference. But because um, I've attended a lot of other conferences, but when you attend the AFWA conference, people say that it is so warm and welcoming. And I really see that, and that is different than most conferences. And we hear it all the time that people come to our conference and they're like, wow, I felt so welcomed and I felt so uplifted by the end of it. And I made some new friends and mm -hmm. we have so many attendees that see people once a year 
and they've made lifelong friends of those people that they've met at our conference. And like Shane said, they become those people that you can pick up the phone and call because as you know, so oftentimes it's not what you know, it's who you know, mm -hmm. and that can help you. And so that is something that's very unique about our conference. And we've had so many people say that about the conference that, and that's why we try to do more networking opportunities. And, you know, for example, we've got our big signature event where we're going to recognize all of our women who count uh, award winners this year in our chapters. And we're going to, um, after that, have a big after party and, and celebrate all of those women achievers in the chapter achievements. And, you know, and, and that's something I think unique, too, with our organization is we not only have our national level, but we have 57 local chapters that people can get involved in and start learning those leadership skills and, you know, starting to grow within the organization. So there's so many opportunities there that we really try to provide for that. Well, and I was just going to say, Lauren, yeah. Greg, you're your feller. He is one of them who will tell us every time he leaves, oh, I just love this conference. It, he goes, <laughs> I can't wait to come back next year. So it's not just the women, Lauren, mm -hmm. it's also the men. So we we do like, you know, men are allowed to come to the conference. Oh, I'm sure there's a couple smart men that will be there as well. <laughs> we welcome them. We welcome them for sure. And the, the, our programming is so good. It's not just for women. And that's what we try to tell people. No, anybody can come. Mm -hmm. And, and and one of the things I just want to say for people that haven't been to a conference yet and are thinking about it is sometimes the small ones, there's a level of intimacy as opposed to the giant ones that are in a convention center uh, where you walk in and it's a wall of people and noise. Uh, so with the small ones, what I found is sometimes there's even better opportunities because there's time built in to really connect with other people. And one conversation can lead to something else and open a new door for you. But you never know until you show up and try it. And, yeah. and, and even if this is your first one and you're more of an introvert, I'm going to say you're not obligated to attend every single session to get all 22 CPEs. Um, we, we want you to do in a way that works for you. And, and sometimes the best part of going to the conference is what's happening outside of the workshops or after hours, not, not just during the presentations themselves. So it's just different ways of looking at it and what you want to take away from it. Exactly. That's exactly it. In the, in 100% agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the vendors, um, I mean, the vendors are gold mines sometimes for opportunities and getting insights that you wouldn't have had before. So um, definitely a fan of in-person. I've actually been to two of your virtual conferences, which were great. So I'm now looking forward to going to an in-person one and, and, and seeing the difference. Because if you shined on the virtual ones during COVID, that this one is really going to be you know, stellar. So I'm looking forward to it. Well, we're excited about it. And and, and one thing you can tell. <laughs> and, and and one of the things that we have touched on a little bit and want to really highlight is using our voice because so often women get a seat at the table, but they don't think that they've earned it. And I just want to say, if you have a seat at the table, it is because you deserve to be there. And, and that means that you have something to contribute, even if it might be contrarian. So let's talk about women using their voices for advocating, whether it's for greater diversity, inclusion, or whatever initiative that might be. Cindy, I think I, I know at least I think when you offer somebody a board position at AFWA, that is another way that they're using their voice because you're giving them that platform, Cindy, to do that. Um, so I really think if you have the opportunity to get into a leadership role, into uh, an association, an alliance, a networking of some sort, when you're getting into and you have that extra platform, you know, some people may say, well, I, you know, I'm an accounting, I'm a bookkeeper or whatever. But when you actually get involved and you can see where AFWA or somebody like this has that platform to get their voice heard, I think that is another big advocacy that we do um, for women um, alike. Well, it's interesting because I've, I've seen some women that in, in have started where they were afraid to speak in a group 
and they've now they're serving on the board of directors and moving into that president's role or that chair role mm -hmm. of our foundation and it's so neat to see that just through their involvement and being welcomed by people that appreciate you how much that has helped with their confidence with their ability to speak out not only in the organization but in their jobs and you know i've i've heard of a, a situation where we have a one of our members that is really going through a tough time right now and it's so nice to hear because we get on calls and it's like oh how are you doing and you know and and they're so supportive and so helpful to say no you don't deserve to be treated like that or you know here's here's what you can do to offset that when somebody does that to you so it's a very helpful and supportive network as well inside the organization as well as helping within outside of you know for your position as well so we it, you know our our goal is to help women both personally and professionally and i see it all the time and i think that's something that's really you know helpful to women to grow in both areas well, I was just going to say, when you said personally, you know, we have a past president right now going through a horrific cancer situation. And yeah. it's not only that, but when you are down and out and you have other situations going on in your life, how they have lifted her up as well mm -hmm. yeah. um, in all areas, emails, you know, gifts, flowers, um, the texting messages, you know, social media. So that's also how we can lift other women up. It's not just professionally, but it's mm -hmm. also personally when you're having, you know, you're having a moment in life that you got to get through. Mm -hmm. and, and, and one of the things I've seen from my own evolution is that when you challenge your limits and you do something you've never done before, you grow personally as well as professionally. And when I see someone who's more advanced than I am, I'll, I'll be very transparent. In the beginning, I used to have envy uh, because how come they have that and I don't have that? But I really found that I changed it around to where now I see them as a p possibility. And my thought is, if they can do that, then I can do that too. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so it was a way that I was able to change perspective for myself also. But one of the other things that's coming through and, and I really want to um, clarify is you are an alliance versus an association. And can you explain the difference or even if there is a difference so that maybe people who've never heard about an alliance can, can know why you chose to go in that direction as opposed to being an association? Well, I'll be right up front with you. I don't know the history behind that, but there was a very distinct discussion on selecting that name. And I think with an alliance, you know, my personal definition between an alliance and an association is with an alliance, it's it's more of that well-rounded grouping together. You know, association is, well, we've got some things in common, but with an alliance, I think it's a growth, more of a growth together. And that's that's how I view it in terms of the differences. Shane, anything you want to add? I was waiting to see how she was going to answer that because I've always been in the association world and there's an association for everything mm -hmm. and um, association and memberships and this, that, and the other. So I do like the alliance form, like the feel of that word a little bit differently um, than association. But um, I, I think that was a good answer, Cindy. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> because it it is you feel yeah I, I don't know it just I think it is a warmer feeling that word alliance versus mm -hmm. an association mm -hmm. um so that that's just my tidbits nice nice um and so let's look to the future especially since you now have this mentoring program you had the career day coming up uh where are women in accounting heading um positive trends, challenges, anything that we haven't touched on that is worth mentioning at this point? 
Well, what's what's very interesting, and the reason we're kind of moving in the direction we're moving a little bit is, as you may know, there aren't as many um, women going into that CPA role. Um, so we are trying to be ahead of that and trying to help give some direction and help teach people that there are other alternatives. We certainly want people to go in to become a CPA, but and we don't want them to lose sight of that. There are other opportunities. I mean, you know, there's forensic accounting, there's, you know, the consulting, there's there's so many different avenues that you can go into, you know, when you're in, you know, that accounting world and, and even the area of finance, you know, there's so many different areas of a direction that you can go. So what our goal is, is to try to teach people what are those? You know, because, you know, going to school to just get a, a business management degree is great. But when you have the accounting and finance degrees there, that I think opens up some different opportunities for you. And so we're trying to teach people about that and what you can do and how what direction you can go. So to learn that, yes, the CPA is a great opportunity and we but what we're finding is people are starting out in these other avenues and then going to the CPA route a little bit later on in their career. So that's kind of the trend that we're seeing right now. And so we're trying not to lose those people on the front end um, and keeping them in that accounting and finance field. And then with hopes that they'll continue because we're always going to need CPAs. <laughs> and, and so that's an important position but we're seeing people go into that a little bit later on. Oh, that's interesting. So the route into the accounting professional has maybe changed and altered because the face of accounting has changed and altered also. Not everybody's on the straight career path any longer. Nope, they're not. So we're trying to help mm -hmm. so they understand it. Shane, was there anything you wanted to add to that? Well, I was just going to say, I personally have two young people in my circle at the moment. Uh, one is going the CPA route and is starting to sit for her exams. And the other one has decided, Auntie Shane, um, I can get into business consulting quicker and make more money faster. So, you know, it is just, it's also, you know, the type of person you're looking at and what they're doing. The one girl knows it's going to be a hard two years at a big top CPA and she hasn't heard, you know, wonderful things about it, but she's, she's staying the course and doing it. And then the other one. So I think that's kind of where we are. And we uh, want to trend and try to help some of those decisions a little earlier at AFWA. We're going to reach out to some high school technical um, more. My daughter actually went to uh, school and earned college credit and her junior and senior year. So I think maybe we need to start a little earlier and get out and do a little bit more education. And we wanna be a part of that. That's why we're trying to start this career day now. We've heard the same thing in our Beta Alpha Psi, which is a, a worldwide, they're having the same issues. So any advocacy that we can do to start uh, younger, to get the word out a little bit earlier in life, we're gonna to try to do, see what we can do. But. Very nice. I just want to say I could keep on going on, but <laughs> I want to be respectful of time. We're all on the same page as far as elevating women in accounting and the options that they have. It doesn't have to just be the corporate track. There's now home-based firms. Um, there's blended firms. So there's so much more available than ever before. But I just want to thank you for taking time away from your busy day some of the things we did touch on is the evolving face of diversity in accounting, how professional associations are turbocharging collaboration and mentorship, and the way that women's voices are reshaping the accounting profession. So if anybody wanted to follow up with you, Cindy, Shane, what would be the best way for them to connect with you as well as the AFWA? Well, thank you so much. And, and we are so delighted to have this opportunity to just have this conversation with you. And we, we just greatly appreciate it so much. So thank you very much for thinking of us and including us in your great work that you're doing. Um, to reach us, basically, you can just reach out to us at www.afwa.org. 
And if you'd like to email us, um, we share a common email at AFWA National at AFWA.org, or you can reach out to us on LinkedIn. Both Shane and I are on LinkedIn, and we also have our national page. And hopefully you'll see some of our social media that's out there. And just, you know, feel free to tag and share and contact us that way as well. Shane, anything you want to add to that? Just want to make sure. That you're never too late. The conference, I've had people walk in the day of and we, we take them. So the conference is never too late. Sign up today, sign up tomorrow. We'd love to have you in Hilton Head. Who doesn't want to go to the beach I, and I have gonna, a little fun? Hilton Head in October. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's like perfect. Well, and here's a little inside secret. We're actually going to be back there again in 26. So, or no, tw yeah, 26. 26. So. So we'll be back again. And so we're going to be looking at, so if, if you're thinking of exhibiting with us, if there are still opportunities there and we'd love to have you because our members are looking for new tools, new techniques and new information. So we'd love to have, we still have space available and would love to have you. Anyway, thank you so much for the engaging conversation. I appreciate the connection. I'm looking forward to Women Who Count next month. This is Lauren Fogelman with Business Success Solutions, showing firm owners how to double their income working half the time.